Court is back in session. Once again, welcome back to Fireside Giants. I am your host, Anthony Rivardo, with my co-host, Alex Wilson. And today, we have to come together. Me, the leader of the Joe Judge fan club, is here to defend our king, Joe Judge. We have been under attack by a certain man by the name of Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin wants to come after our king, and we will not stand for this. We will not allow this slander to continue. No, Kelvin, we will not. So... Alex and I are here to discuss the second day of training camp and also fire back at Kelvin Benjamin, Kelvin overweight Benjamin who couldn't lose 17 pounds to save his job. We are coming to defend our King Joe Judge and I'm ready to do it. Alex, how you doing my friend? I'm doing pretty well and, and yesterday you know, I had a soccer game at like 8 p.m. I get out of the soccer game and I look at my phone and everyone's freaking out and I'm like what the hell is going on just to see... This overweight donut stuffing, Popeyes popping, son of a gun, talking trash about Joe Judge for what? I mean, I guess maybe they could have handled it a little bit better, not just, you know, cut him before he got on the field and got dressed and everything. But at the end of the day, when Joe Judge asks you to do something and you do the exact opposite and you're trying to make the roster, you're going to get cut. You're not going to be treated very nicely. Like, if your boss tells you to do something and you don't do it, in fact, you actually go out of your way to do the opposite of what he asked you to do, you're going to get in trouble and you're going to lose the respect that you had previously, right? That's like ultimately the reality of, of you know what happened in Kelvin Benjamin. Joe Judge asked him, you got to lose, what, 14 pounds in two and a half months. Some people think that's impossible. That's not impossible whatsoever, whatsoever, especially when you're already 268 pounds. You know, a lot of that's water weight. You know, a lot of that just happens – from dieting and doing the right things. You have professional trainers that are there to help you for free, for free to help you do this. Normal people can do this by just exercising and doing like regular stuff and dieting, um, cardio, water weight, you know, stuff like that. But Kelvin Benjamin said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to go down to 251. I'm going to go up to 268. And well, let's see what Joe Judge says. And Joe Judge is like, bro, you know, if I asked you to cut down this amount, even if you got to the half of that and show me you were trying, I would have probably kept you around. I personally believe the Giants probably would have kept him around if they would have just, you know, if he would have at least cut, at least he would have tried. Instead, he did the opposite, gained 20 pounds, <laughs> and, and he now is complaining about Joe Judge and, and, you know, all this stuff. And the stuff he said was really crazy, you know, absolutely insane. He was like, it was just like they were trying to sabotage me to get me out of there. You know, what's the point of that? I think Dave Gettleman personally did Benjamin a favor and brought him in in the first place just to give him an opportunity. And Joe Judge was like, he's not going to make the roster. We don't want him. We don't need him. But I'll do it for you just because it's a favor. Um, you know, he called it a hoax. I just felt like from day one, once I stepped on the field, once I put on the colors, he never liked me. He didn't even want me there. By the way, this article and the quotes are coming from Zach uh, Rosenblatt of NJ.com. Great job there getting some some very controversial quotes from Calvin Benjamin. I don't know how he enticed him to, to let loose on uh, judge like this, but you know, definitely a good way to end your NFL career a little bit, uh, a little bit early. But the one quote that stood out to me that really pissed me off, the one quote that I was like, "This guy's brain cells must be fried, must be absolutely baked." Those Popeyes, you know, biscuits are not doing him right right now. And basically, he says, "I have a perspective on Joe Judge. He's not a co he's not a coach that can ever win a Super Bowl because he sits there and cusses all day. You can tell he's one sided about everything." Anthony, what are you thinking about that ridiculousness? Well, I just think the whole thing is ridiculous. I think Kelvin Benjamin was obviously brought in to give it – he was given an opportunity to compete for a bottom-of-the-barrel position, right? Bottom of the roster, he can compete, maybe make the 53-man roster. But he was given a task. He had to get his weight under control. He had to meet a certain threshold. He had to accomplish a specific goal that was set out to him. And here's my thing with Kelvin Benjamin. He goes on this tangent and he says, but I passed the conditioning test, so why did I get? Why was I getting fined for my weight? It's like, okay, it's not about the fact that he was trying to condition your body for the season. He's well aware of the fact that there are 265-pound men. It's about Some listening of them are to the head coach. Linemen. Right, some of them are defensive linemen. They pass the, pass the conditioning test. It's about the coach gives you a job and a goal, and he tells you to do it. You have to freaking do it, and he didn't do it. And I think that's like the most glaring 
part of this whole Kelvin Benjamin thing where he just doesn't understand that. And it's why he didn't work out in the NFL. It's why he never found success because he could not listen to the authority figures that gave him responsibilities and goals. And that's ultimately why he's no longer in the league because when they give you a goal to accomplish, I'm sure he's not the, I'm sure Joe Judge is not the only coach that's told Kelvin Benjamin to lose weight. Okay. He's been overweight for the entirety of his career ever since like a year or two. So I'm sure he's not the only coach that has said, Hey, you need to drop some pounds. But of course, Kelvin Benjamin has never been able to reach those goals, get to the certain weight thresholds that coaches want him to get to, and ultimately, now he's no longer in the NFL. I don't think he's getting a return to the NFL, especially after ripping a head coach publicly in the media like that. I highly doubt that he gets another job in this league. Um, He already wasn't about to get a job until Dave Gettleman gave him this one, doing him a favor, I guess. I don't know. Dave Gettleman, we can have an opinion on him and his involvement with this, but really... I think the main takeaway, like from Kelvin Benjamin's perspective, is that he just doesn't get it. He clearly does not understand. When you have a job to do, you have to complete it. And if you don't, whether or not you pass the conditioning, you were told to lose weight and you didn't. You gained weight. Like that's the worst part of it. If he if he lost if he was supposed to lose 17 pounds and he lost 15, I'm sure Joe Judge would have been like, okay, no big deal. I won't find you. Great job. I'm proud of the work you did. But he gained three pounds, dude. It's not like he lost some of the weight he was supposed to lose. He didn't lose any of it. He added weight on top of it. Like, how bad does your self-control have to be? And then he said it was muscle. How much of... (laughs) Yeah, he said it was muscle. muscle. But, dude, that's not even the the point, though. Like, that's, again, he's missing the point. He didn't... (laughs) Joe Judge didn't want him to add muscle. He wanted him to lose fat, maybe even lose some muscle. Just get slimmer, faster, better, in better shape. I don't know, man. There's just a clear huge disconnect between Kelvin Benjamin and authority figures and I think that's what we're seeing he just has a problem with authority and of course he mentioned how Joe Judge is never going to win a Super Bowl Joe Judge has won like three Super Bowls I believe in his career as a special teams coordinator I understand yep and a national championship at Alabama I understand that he's he didn't do that as a head coach but still he was on the most prestigious coaching staffs the two most prestigious coaching staffs in all of football Alabama and New England those are the two most prestigious. He won championships ever. on both of those staffs. Yeah, the most prestigious ever, dude. Bill Belichick is the greatest coach ever, and his staff has been the greatest staff ever. And Same Joe Judge was a part of that, and he got a head coaching job out of it, and he actually got the signature from Bill Belichick to the Giants that said, go ahead and sign this guy. Go hire him. I don't know, man. Kelvin Benjamin, I understand Joe Judge isn't for everybody, okay? He's clearly for me, leader of the Joe Judge fan club. He's for Alex, and he's for a lot of Giants fans. But James Bradbury himself said it today. He's not for everybody. Some people don't deal well with authority figures. Clearly, Calvin Benjamin is one of those people. You know, okay, let let me revise that. James Bradbury said he's not for everybody. He's not for losers, right? That's how I see it. Joe Judge isn't for losers. People that, you know, Benji Biscuits over here, not willing to you know, submit to authority, not willing to sit and actually listen to disciplinary figures. You know, when your coach asks you to do something, and he, like, look, he passed a conditioning test, right? Like, that's, that's like, what he'll sit on. Like, I passed it. What does it matter? It's like if you told Kenny Galladay, run a go route, you know, run a go route. But instead, he runs a slant. He catches the ball, but he didn't listen to what the coach has told him to do, and that's wrong. You know what I mean? The, the, the result was there. He, had, he passed the conditioning test. He caught the football, but he didn't run the route the coaches told him to run. And that's where the lack of discipline, lack of authority, um, you know, he just doesn't have it. He, like you said, he doesn't understand. And Joe Judge is, is proving to be a solid coach so far. You know, I feel pretty confident. Compared to what we've had in the recent years in Pat Shermer and Ben McAdoo, this team is, is heading in the right direction. We are finally heading in a direction that we can be proud of and, and optimistic about without feeling like we have a lot to lose. Um, and Dexter Lawrence said it today. You know, he came out and literally was like, I don't know a single person that doesn't like Joe Judge. I don't know a single person. And Bradbury saying, yeah, he's not for everybody. He's not for losers. He's for winners. He's for people that want to put in the hard work, listen to authority, listen to disciplinary factors, and actually win football games. I mean, Calvin Benjamin, like, ate his way out of the NFL. You know what I mean? He straight up ate his way out of the NFL, turned it into muscle. He was closer to being a left tackle than he was a tight end by the end of this training camp. You know what I mean? Like, that's the reality. He's a bi- He was a big boy. You know, he was about to you steal Dexter Lawrence's job. You know what's really funny? We sat here and we laughed really hard yesterday at that fake tweet by Wesley Steinberg. He made all that up. 
he really wasn't that far off. <laughs> like, it was pretty In close, a sense, honestly. Kelvin Benjamin was fired for eating. Like, he was fired for food-related <laughs> incident like Wesley Steinberg made up. So, I don't oh know. It kind of – Wesley was close. Hats off to Wesley. He, he did a good job. <laughs> I just hope I just hope he didn't raid the fridge on the way out. <laughs> I just I just picturing Benji Biscuits like running with all of these things in his hands to his car and like the security chasing after him, <laughs> hopping in like a 1997 Toyota Camry. He's like trying to get away, and it like tilts to the side when he steps <laughs> like, yeah. into it. <laughs> he like throws everything in the trunk, and the trunk is just dragging behind because there's like 500 pounds of like just raw meat in the back. Oh my god. It's it, I, I this is actually like comedic. Like I would I would expect to see this at like a Kevin Hart stand up comedy session. And, and this not is like an, um an actual like NFL. an Adam Sandler movie about football. That's what it is. Oh my it's God. like an Adam Sandler movie. It, it's it's insane. Like I never would have thought never would have thought a player would get so mad about being released because he gained weight when he was asked to lose weight. And then literally like all these fake reports coming out that he was you know he stole he was taking too much food home or whatever you know which definitely i guess is possible but highly i don't believe that report but the reality is he was eating man guy was eating i don't know what the hell he was eating but if he was actually trying to lose weight and ended up gaining three pounds instead of losing the 14 so in fact there was a 17 pound differential in two and a half months, you have two and a half months to lose weight, and he gained three pounds. He must have not been doing anything. You know what I mean? He yeah. must have done absolutely nothing. Like what? Either that, or he was doing like zero cardio and just lifting weights and eating protein, because that's how you build muscles. So like, he must have just not been trying to achieve this goal. Like you have to try to achieve the goal. It doesn't seem like he did. And I don't want to be like super insensitive, or you know, like it is hard to lose weight. I understand that. But this guy is a professional athlete that has professional trainers that work with him to help him lose his weight. All he has to do follow the program that they give him. That's literally what happens when you're on an NFL team, college team, whatever. They give you a nutrition like meal program, and then they say follow this and do these workouts so you can reach this weight goal. That's all he had to do was just follow the steps and listen to his authority figures. So it's not really a matter of, you know, like losing weight is difficult, okay? Like I don't want to make anybody feel bad who's listening to this, but Kelvin Benjamin had everything handed to him to help him lose this weight, but still didn't, presumably at least, right? Because NFL players, when they get signed to a team, they work with the coaching staff, they go to the meetings, voluntary or not, they speak to the coaching staff, the trainers, they have a training staff, a guy, a nutritionist on standby, I'm pretty sure. They can get all of their weights like to the right numbers. Like They just have to do it. They have to put in the work, and they have to listen to the authority figures. And for me, my takeaway, again, Kelvin Benjamin doesn't do well with authority. He ignored all of the signs and all of the help that the trainers and nutritionists were giving him. He just didn't listen to any of it. And even if the Giants didn't give him a trainer or a nutritionist, let's say, he still played years in the NFL, meaning that he accumulated millions of dollars in wealth. He could absolutely go hire a personal chef and go hire a personal trainer to help him achieve this goal. Like, it's not like one of those situations where he doesn't have everything afforded to him. He does. He has everything that he needs, all the tools at his disposal to accomplish this goal, but he did not. And that's just because... He doesn't deal well with authority, and that's ultimately why he's no longer going to be in the NFL. But Joe Judge will continue to be the head coach of the New York Giants, the king of the Joe Judge fan club. Joe Judge is going to, I believe, take the Giants to a really good spot within the next couple of years and potentially even bring them to back to the playoffs and the Super Bowl ultimately. But Kelvin Benjamin, unfortunately, will have to watch from his couch while he eats some more chips. Yeah, and you know, let's move on to Shane Lemieux because some stuff is coming out right now, and it's not good. Shane Lemieux has a knee injury. He was carted off. Um, That's terrible news. Knee injury, uh, let's hope for the best. Hopefully it's just a minor strain. Hopefully it's nothing that's going to keep him out for a prolonged period of time. But when you're carted off the field, not a good sign at all. And this is why the Giants really messed up not getting more depth at at a tackle or really an interior guard this offseason. They only got Zach Fulton. They have a couple of UDFAs from last year that they're trying to work in. But... This could prove to be a huge situation um, if it's serious. Ah, Anthony, what are you thinking about this? I know, I know, Shane Lemieux did not look great last year, but he was one of our only players that was even contention to start. And now you lose, maybe potentially losing him. This this could end up being really bad. 
Yeah, I know that Shane Lemieux wasn't very good last year, and I've been a big critic of his performance this past season, but this would still be a huge blow to the team, and I want to make that all, like completely obvious, like that clear. That's my message here, that losing Shane Lemieux is a big loss to this team, and I'll give a couple reasons why. One, he's a young player, okay? He has room for improvement because he's a young player. It's not just that he played poorly in his rookie, rookie season. He was a rookie. He wasn't even supposed to start. Fifth round pick. He did start. He showed some good things. Struggled a lot, but he had room for improvement. Two, this sucks because he was working really hard this offseason. He was in for voluntary practices at like 5.30 in the morning getting extra work in. Like the dude was busting his ass to become a better football player and from what everything that i've read i did a lot of research on shane lemieux for a video that i was doing on tony's takes which i'm gonna have to scrap now if he is injured but shane lemieux has been working really hard on hand placement he's been trying to improve his pass protecting skills and he's been working a lot on his um, hand placement because he watched film and his hand placement was really poor last year as most of us who watched the film on shane lemieux obviously noticed but he noticed it too and that's what he's been working on and the third thing is there is no depth on this offensive line so Shane Lemieux being injured just means we have one less body to put out there okay like whether it's the worst body to put out there or not it's one less body to put out there and now we might have to go look and search for someone else who could potentially be even worse and not only that not only could that person be even worse, but they even could be a better player. You know, maybe they have a better statistical career, but they don't have the chemistry that Shane Lemieux has working with this coaching staff, working with this offensive line all throughout these mandatory and voluntary mini camps and OTAs. He's been working with this team. Anybody else that they bring in has not. So Shane Lemieux starting last year, working with the team this year. He was supposed to be the starter because he's familiar and he's improving and he's working really hard to get better. The Giants are going to have a tough time finding the guy with that work ethic, with that young developmental mentality, just pulling someone off the streets like that. And they just don't have a lot of depth right now. Like, I guess the other option is Zach Fulton. You take Hernandez, put him back at left guard, put Zach Fulton at right guard. Zach Fulton also did play left guard in his career, so he could do that. Or you could even put him at center. He played that as well, and you could maybe move Nick Gates. I don't know. The Giants can get a little creative here, but ultimately... We had the worst offensive line in the NFL last year, arguably. Like, we had, we ranked bottom in the league in pass blocking, in um, pressure percentage allowed, and sacks allowed. We were second in the NFL, only behind Philadelphia. And now we just suffered an injury on the offensive line. And not only that, we didn't sign anyone. We didn't draft anyone. All we did on the offensive line, we cut Kevin Zeitler. And we got a couple undrafted free agents. We did nothing to improve this offensive line. It only got worse. And now it looks like it's only going to get worse with the Shane Lemieux injury. I hope that this is nothing serious. I hope it's nothing major because we can't afford to lose any bodies on the offensive line. We don't have a lot of players there anyway. So this is scary, but hopefully it's nothing major. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and say a prayer for Shane Lemieux. Me too. Uh, definitely not ideal uh, for the Giants right now. And just to list a couple of free agents that are available, David DeCastro, we know he's also coming off a couple of injuries last season um, on the verge of retirement possibly. Maybe the Giants could see if, kick the tires on him, see if he was willing to come in. He's a former pro bowler, 100% better than Shane Lemieux at this point in his career. But again, for the scheme, who knows if David DeCastro is even a fit. Probably worth monitoring that situation and seeing if he's willing to consider it because at this point in time, um, the Giants are really, really thin at guard. I mean, depending on Zach Fulton, let's say Shane Lemieux, knock on wood, has a really serious injury. You're depending on Zach Fulton and I think Sweezy, I forget who else is back there, uh, Murphy. There's some, you know, not really experienced players that are going to be competing for that second starting job. Maybe Nick Gates kicks over and Jonathan Harrison fills in at center. That's a possibility. Some other guys that are available, Nick Easton, James Carpenter, J.R. Sweezy, uh, Mike Iupati. Uh, Joe Dahl, Kalesio Um, That's pretty much the majority of the, of the notable ones. Just a bunch ones. of washed-up veterans. That's pretty much Pretty it. much. And they're older, too. They're all in the, Most of them are in their 30s. Right. Um, David DeCastro is probably their best bet if they're going to go down that route, that, that veteran free agent signing route. But again, and the Giants have no he's money. He's contemplating retirement, too. Yeah, so. the Giants don't have any money right now. So it's, it's going to be tough for them to supplement that loss, which is why they really should have drafted somebody. 
um, it might come back to bite them in the butt. Even even if it was um, you know, someone that what was that guy in the sixth round, Trey Smith, that we lost yeah, Trey out on. Smith, but he did have that like blood clot or heart problem. Yeah, but or something, at least you but... have somebody, you know, at least a body. I mean, this is sixth round pick. You know, we we ended up with Darius Williams, who I who I yeah. like, but. Um, yeah. Then at the end of the day, you you have your weakest spot is the offensive line. One injury and things get a little sketchy, and it's already happened on day two of camp. So it's a really big yeah. problem for the Giants. One they obviously avoided. Um, and you know what? This is this is a, a tough spot for us. But hopefully, you know, hopefully it's okay because this is I'm a little worried right now. And you know, Daniel Jones is directly impacted by this. The wide receivers, the offense, directly impacted by this. Um, we'll see how it goes. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll monitor this. We'll let you know if there's any updates. Of course, we'll have something out immediately when that comes out. But for right now, it's just an injury. They're they're you know running tests to see what it is. Could just be a hyperextension. Um, and if it is, you know, maybe it's just you know a couple weeks out. Ho- hopefully, it's just a hyperextension. He's out four weeks a month, and he, you know he comes back in a couple weeks in the regular season, works his way back, um, and he is okay. And the Giants can supplement his loss with Fulton um, in the meantime. So. Anthony, is there anything else you want to add to today's practice? I know Kadarius Tony, uh, he's working his way back from you know having COVID. Um, he looked good yesterday. He also looked good today. So the Giants feel pretty positive. He'll be back with the team um, in a full capacity within the next few days. Anthony, um, anything else that's on your mind? Yeah, we have one other injury that we have omitted. We got to mention this real quick. This one we don't, also don't know how severe it is. But Lorenzo Carter was also standing on the sideline. Um, apparently, I think someone said it's lower body with him. We're just hoping that he had some sort of cramp. But apparently, Lorenzo Carter today during practice did stand on the sideline. He was injured. He was not feeling well. Something happened, and they believe that it was something on the lower half of his body. So. Not a good thing there. Definitely something to monitor. But obviously wasn't something nearly as serious as Shane Lemieux where he was carted off the field. It was just something probably minor that's just going to hold him out of practice for a few days, I hope. But something to monitor. Lorenzo Carter has really struggled to stay healthy throughout his career. Obviously, he had a season-ending injury last season. He was completely healthy when he showed up to camp this year. And we were really surprised to hear that because, you know, we had... That's an Achilles injury. That's tough. And Saquon Barkley coming back from the ACL injury, he's not ready yet. But Lorenzo Carter was just ready to go. I was a little skeptical, and I was like, okay, I'm really happy to hear that, but that's kind of weird. Now maybe we're seeing he could have rushed back too soon. Maybe they're just trying to, you know, rest him and not push him too hard. I don't know what it is. I don't want to speculate too much, and it sounds like what I'm doing here is just speculating, but just something to monitor with Lorenzo Carter that he was standing on the sideline with an apparent injury today. Yeah, we'll keep all of you guys updated on those situations as they unfold in the coming hours and days, my friends. But thank you so much for tuning to Fireside Giants today. Uh, that wraps up, you know, our day two. Of Hold camp, on, you know, one more tweet just came out. We have another thing. injury. <laughs> we have one more injury. Another one. Source: Giants offensive tackle Matt Pear is dealing with a lower back strain that he suffered back in April. He has had lower okay. back issues in the past and re-aggravated it during his off-season training program. So continued. He has been receiving physical therapy on it and has been doing side work at camp. His timetable to return to full participation is currently unknown. So that's your update on Matt Parrott as well. Still dealing with a bad back injury. That's a lower back strain. Not good. Those can take a very long time to heal because there's really not much you can do for it. You just have to wait. You have to sit and you have to wait. So let's hope that Matt Parrott heals up really quickly because that could be potentially two starting offensive linemen that we don't have for the start of the regular season. And we lost both of them today, it sounds like. So Shane Lemieux, oh hopefully he's goodness. okay. Matt Parrott, hopefully he recovers. This is something that's been nagging him since April, though. So that's not good. That's been around for a long time. But hopefully he can get it healed up real quickly. Yeah, I mean, if it's been around since April, clearly it's something that's lingering. Um, hopefully they can work it out. I, I think he's still on the pup list right now, so he's not even participating in practice, probably just rehabbing. But this offensive line, man, talk about a huge risk they took this year. You know, a huge risk that these uh, – that this off that this front office took, I, we still don't get it. We've been trying to figure out why they did this. We know the coaching staff. We know if they were healthy, there's optimism. But the problem is you have to stay healthy. NFL injuries happen, and especially during the off season for one to pop up and then linger this long, couple months. Not a good sign at all. So guys, we'll keep you guys monitoring um, on these situations. We'll let you know if anything pops. Um, but my friends, thank you so much, so much for tuning into Fireside Giants. Make sure to subscribe below on. 
YouTube, Apple, and Spotify, and make sure to turn on notifications on as well. We'll have content on every single day for you guys to keep you updated and fresh. So have an awesome rest of your day, and we'll catch you guys later. Mm-hmm.